Hello YouTube, Cameron here. I'm back at this turn of century drum again. I might change the name again because I'm in a different section of the same hill and it's like 1930s to 50s. And I just found this interesting, it's a tile, but it's made to look like wood, see? If it was whole, I would save it, but it's not. There's a lot of them in this hill though. Here, is this one whole? One moment, I'm pulling it out. Oh, it is, but it's huge. Here it is. It doesn't look, it is made to look like wood too, but I'm not gonna save it. The, it's too big. Bye. Back when I find something out. Vintage toy, it's rubber. Not sure how old it is. It's like a little guy riding a train. Look, that's cool. Yeah, I hope it's old. Be back when I find something out. I don't know if it will clean up well, but this pin has a face on it. It's like a campaign pin. Look at that. Cool, I hope it will survive. Just some part of what would have been a really nice toy gun. Yep, fortunately broken. That would have been nice. Save it though for art. Guys, I just found an awesome clock. Look at this. I need to find the base to it, but look. Whoa. Look at that. You can still see the clock. It's a paper face though, so I'm hoping it will survive when it drives out. Whoa. Look at that. That's cool. I'm hoping I find the base to it. Bye. Just found the other piece of the gun, so I am going to glue it back together. Yep. Nice. Woo. Pretty nice. Look, it says under the barrel some stuff. Can't see what it says. It's hubbly though. Bye. Oh my god! Look what I just found! My first ever jug! My first stoneware or crock American. I found some English ones, but oh my god, it's a small one, so I actually have space for it. Whoa! It's in really good shape. No name on it, but it's in great shape. It looks like it has some cracking, but be very careful. Oh crap! It's flaking! I'll wrap it up. Bye. Just got a just me dairy, and I don't think it's one I have. It's definitely not actually. Look! Nice. Woo! It is a good dig. It's got something nice. With the original lid, a ball a special mason. A little tiny one. Nice, in good shape. Woo! This is a good dig. In the last film, I found a few miniature pottery pieces and I just found this little tiny porcelain baby doll. Nice. Doing it's got good. a really nice slug plated milk bottle from Marchester. That's pretty far away. Yeah. Nice. Okay, let's keep digging. Let me just wrap this up. I just got a commemorative spoon, it's so cool. Look, I don't know what it's for yet, but it's really cool. Whoa, I'm gonna go soon. Let's do a bit more raking. Let's do some live digging. It's a hard overhang. Let me just put the light on. Okay, we're well, well, under an overhang. Let's see what we can get. Oh, that's a handle for a toy gun right there. Save that for art. Maybe I'll find the rest of the gun. Okay. Very hard in here. There's a branch digging into my back as I dig. Ooh, what's this? <gasps> it's a doll. It's those two of the arms. Look at that. Whoa. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more just to make sure there's nothing like directly next to it, like legs or something. And then I'm gonna go, but it's late, getting late. I've been here for several hours now and I need energy to walk home. Huh, that's an old shoe. Let's get to the focus. Ah, uh, you can't see it, it's falling apart. There we go. Okay, I'll just reach around for a moment. I'll do a countdown. And then I'll go if I don't find anything within that countdown. I see a bottle. Let's see. Is this something good? It would have been. Oh, actually. Oh my God. Oh my God. New York Central. It's a globe for an oil lamp. Oh my God. It seems to be in good shape. Woo. Holy shit. I kept digging. Oh, I dug into an ant's nest, but I don't give a <laughs> Sorry, cursed. Whoa. Okay, I'll just wait to make sure I don't have the base. But, holy shit. Okay, let's just make sure the base is not there. I'll do a quick rake around. Just make sure the base is not there. So I want to make sure. Whoa, cock lid. I'll leave that there. Maybe I'll come back for it if I find the crock. 
Hey guys, so yeah, as you saw, I had a really great trip. I got that jug and I got that globe from New York Central. It's probably the better find, honestly, because the jug has a lot of cracks and stuff, and it's value wise. And it is a really good find. I just have to hope it doesn't get damaged on the way home because I have to walk all the way home, which is over a mile uphill, which does not sound like a lot because I'm carrying a lot of stuff. Carrying a lot of weight, so it will be tough. And also, I just spent the past over two hours digging. Spent the past about, let's see, three hours digging. So, that's why it's tough. But, I don't have a choice. Hello, YouTube. Came in here, I'm back to do a review, and this is gonna be a long one, but a great one. Let's get started. First is this, which is really cool. It's still drying, I think. It's a clock. Fortunately, there's a brand name right here, but you can't really read it, but look, it's a really ornate and fancy clock. I think it would have had a base here, but that's gone. I did not dig it. Yeah, so that's really cool. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it though. It's like, it's not really in good enough condition for my collection, but I don't want to throw it out. Ugh. The issue with the face is paper, so the face is not in great condition. Yeah. Let's see if we can read the brand name on the back. I don't think so though. No, and still has some roots on it. I need to work on that. Okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Gentle. Okay. Then there's this toy gun, which unfortunately is in too bad of condition to keep, but I thought I'd show it for the video. Let's see, it's falling apart literally as I hold it. And it's missing one half of the back. Oh, and dirt's falling out of it. Good thing I held it over the box. But you can see it's a it's a Hubley toy gun, but an older one. You see, this is the handle and stuff. It would have been really nice if it was in better condition. It's falling apart literally. Yeah, look, there's the handle. Yeah, that would have been nice. I know exactly how old that is. It's literally falling apart. I'm hoping the box is not leaking dirt. Okay, now I'll go over to the other stuff. This stuff is mostly for sculpting and not for my collection. The stuff in this box, the collection stuff is out here mostly. But it's stuff that's worth showing. This is this is actually for my collection. It was just sturdy enough that I put it in there. It's this weird, it's a crest. But look, it has like holes pinned out and like a symbol. As you can see, they, they made a symbol of it. Um, it's backwards, uh, like this, you can see. So that's pretty cool. You can see the symbol better this way, actually. Yeah, so I don't know what that's from, actually, but it's definitely carved out in a shape. So I'll save that. I'm sure what I'm gonna do with it, though. Pretty cool, though. And there's this uh, part of an oil lamp. And look, it still has the original wick. Isn't that cool? Yeah. This is the original fabric wick. And then there's this really cool like door lock, very ornate. Yeah. Let's see what else. Is this which is going to my collection? It's a it's a rubber cue ball, as you can see. Pretty cool. Very old. Let's see what else is worth showing. Uh, there's this antique flashlight. Yep. Which is made out of copper. Fortunately missing the back end, otherwise it would be worth keeping. It's not, I don't know the brand name, so it's not really worth keeping. What's well, good enough for art, but yeah. And I got this nice dish. Unfortunately, it's too rust stained for my collection, but I'll use it as a tray to go under a flower pot. But it does have a maker's mark, barely visible. It says Greenwood something. I'm guessing it says China, Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah, and there was another plate I found, but unfortunately I accidentally left it at the dump along with a really fancy teacup. So I'll have to, fortunately I know where it is, so it's gonna be easy to get next time I go. It probably will be, won't be for at least a week. Unfortunately. Something to look forward to though. Hopefully not too much, because what happens is I kind of have an addiction to bottling, so I get like this feeling in me, like kind of like butterflies in my stomach. Whenever I'm thinking about going bottling again, it makes it hard for me to focus on anything, even if I'm not even close to the time when I'm allowed to go again. So yeah. So I need to keep reminding myself that I can't go for a while, so I don't fo focus too much on it. And this, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it for my collection or not, probably it's gonna be for art. 
simply because it's too stained up. It's a celluloid hairbrush. It says on this side, French Ivory. That's probably the name of the color. Yeah. Oh, this is leaking water somehow. I'll have to put this in a position to dry. It's very interesting, it's like a printing thing. You see, it's rusty metal, but it has these numbers and letters going all along here for like printing. That's cool. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it though. There's some forks and spoons. Those ones aren't worth showing. And there is one worth showing, which is not in the box. Let's see what else. There's a doorknob, which is a plain white one. Uh, there's this thing, which has like wire around it, as you can see. And it has like a design on the top, but I cannot tell what it is. I'm hoping maybe I can clean it up with some chemicals so I can identify what it's what's on there. But right now I can't. It could be something interesting. I don't know. Probably the lid something. Then there's this uh, porcelain part of a radio. And this Philco I know made radio tubes, so I'm assuming maybe they made radios too or something. Yeah. Okay, that's all for that part. Let's keep moving. Let me just take a break. Okay, I'm back. There's this, which is a horseradish drawer. And I actually, I have another one of these. This is like early 1900s. But the weird thing is, see how it says mustard horseradish? It ha the other one I have has a brand name right here. But this one doesn't have it, which is weird. So let me go get the one that has the brand name. Unfortunately, it has a crack in it. But I was going to keep that one instead. But then I realized it doesn't have the brand name on it. I realized when I was cleaning it up. Here, let me just find it. You'll get a bit of a peek of my what my room looks like while I look for where I put the jar. So you'll see my room. A bit messy right now, but not too much. Uh, darn it, where did I put it? Uh, sorry, this shouldn't take so long. Uh, well, hey, you're getting a sneak peek of my room while I look for it. Oh, here it is. Here, so you see it's the same kind of thing. Except it says here, in the center between mustard and horseradish, it says R.C. Williams Co. I'm guessing this one's older. But the other one still has a lot of bubbles and stuff in it, so I don't think it's... So I think the other one's still early 1800s, just not as early. Neither of them are ground lip, they're more like 1910s. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna keep both of them. Even though the one I found in this video is in much better condition. It doesn't have the brand name on it, which is a serious downside. Either it's definitely the same brand. The next item, this is blue like drink stir. I think it's broken off on one end. Like it's not the whole thing. I was hoping it would have like a advertising thing on it, but it doesn't. But I'll just leave that inside a bottle like this. Then there's this plain little cup, but it's in quite good shape. So I might be able to use that. And a little flower pot, that's for use. And here's something cool. I didn't know how they would have attached the arms on these like porcelain dolls, but this one still has them attached. It's being held in by metal wire, which is kind of, which is pretty cool. Yeah. As you can see it's actually hand painted or some, or it might be glazed based on how good condition it is. You can see it still has the hair and this, this skin is pink, except for on the arms. For the reason they didn't glaze the arms. You see, that's really cool. And on the back it says Germany. Too. That's really cool. Yeah, so it's still has the original arm attached. Unfortunately, not the leg. But you can see the metal where it would have been attached. So it would have had the same fastening mechanism. Yeah, so that's cool. That's a nice find. That's definitely going in my collection. Then there's this other piece of solaroid. Surprisingly, all the bristles are intact, even though some of them are a bit bent. I see no, there's one that's broken. Literally one. Unfortunately, no markings on this one. At least that I can see. But actually just marking, one moment. I just can only see it in the light. You can see uh, there. Not enough to read the brand name, but it's a bit faded or something. Okay, there is a brand. Okay, maybe if I get it wet, one moment. No, I can't read the brand name. I think it's just weekly stamp. It's not faded, so I don't see how it would fade. Yeah, it's just weakly stamped, unfortunately, so I won't be able to identify it unless one of you recognizes the logo. But I'll probably save that, since it's in good shape. And here's something pretty cool. I've 
seen one of these before, but it was broken. Not in a dump I was thinking, actually. I discovered a dump that someone else was already digging in. So it was nice and decided to leave it behind since I already have other good dumps to go to. So I left it behind, but at that dump they had one of these, but it was very cracked up, so I didn't take it. So of course, if they leave something behind, of course I have a right to take it, because that means they probably didn't want it. But it was cracked, so yeah. But anyway, I'm not sure exactly how old this is. I'm guessing like earlier 20s. It's definitely machine made, not too early because it doesn't really have any bubbles or anything. I think it's like 1920s. It's pretty cool. And I need to clean off the letters a bit better, but that's not the point. Uh, so it says, register, do not refill with cider or vinegar. So it's probably some sort of product like that. Wayne County Produce Co. Greenpoint, Long Island. It's pretty cool. And it has a nice logo here too. Yeah, so that's a nice find. Yeah. And there's this old cork, which I think might be newer, because it was nearer to the top of the dump. So it might be like modern litter, but I really have no idea. Because it has, but it's kind of like in the style of a modern cork. Because the new, older ones typically go like in the like kind of funnel, like cone shape. So that way they would be compatible with more types of bottles. So that's why I think this one might be newer. Yeah. And it does have some writing on the top, but I can't tell what it says. I'm not sure how, if this is old or not. Because do us some modern litter on top, not like a dump level of modern little litter, I mean, not little. Uh, there was not a dump level modern litter, but there was some modern litter. Like, I literally found this Pokemon marble, which is definitely modern. As you can see, it's glass though, but that has nothing to do with the age. It's pretty much, could be a few, could be like a decade old, but not that old. Not old enough. <laughs> this Pokemon started in 1995. Yeah. And there's this little baby doll, unfortunately no arms or legs, but still really cool. Still has the paint, also from Germany, like the last one. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. And this jar, which I, it, it's badly chipped, but I have the original lid for it, which was on it. So this was chipped, actually, before it was thrown out. Okay, yeah, so it's a ball special. It has like an interesting kind of like error thing on the base, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a number nine, very interesting font. You see, this is the original lid, so that will cover up the crack. I'm probably gonna keep it. And this is like, I'm guessing what if I had one of those like Asian vases or something on top. I'm hoping I'll find it next time, that's why I'm saving this. I'm hoping I'll find the other piece to the set. Or it might be like a teacup. Then I have a plain cup, yeah. An older one though. Oh, it has like a bruise on the base, so I'm probably not gonna keep that, but I might try to find the use for it, other than as a drinking glass. This one's also good enough condition. This one's good enough condition for a drinking glass. I know these all like would have been like jelly stuff, but they would be meant for reuse. I mean, oh yeah, here's one of my favorite finds. Here, it's a 1928 presidential campaign button. Here, let's put it on my legs so you can see it. Look at this. Smith for president. That would be Al Smith of New York, Democrat. He actually, I know he had a close relationship with Franklin Roosevelt. I think it was like a mentor kind of thing. Like Al Smith was his mentor, but I can't really remember exactly the story. But I do know of who this is, and look at that. It's not too, too rare, but it's still a really cool, epic find. Look at that. Yeah, nice.
And here, my first ever croc jug. Well, I, I found like crocs in the past, but they were all English and not any, I've never found a pottery, I found once found a pottery bottle, but it was definitely, it's a uh, stoneware and it's European though. I can tell because it's, here, let me zoom in on it. It's that style is typically made in like Europe, like Germany or something like that from where I know. So, but this is my first American pottery bottle or croc. Which is what I normally like to set goals for myself. Like it's in something I've never dug before that I wanted to, like, but it's a realistic goal. And this, while I don't have a lot of older dumps now, because I finished my 1910s dump, I do find croc pieces quite frequently in the dumps I dig in. So yeah, but this is the first time I found a whole one. Look at that, nice. Unfortunately it has some bad cracks on the other side, but so I'm not going to pick it up, it's very delicate. I'm not going to pick it up until I have exactly where I'm going to put it in my room and then I'm going to leave it there. A small piece, you can see right there, actually did fall off and I'm going to glue that back on very carefully. Yeah, but it's still a beautiful find. Yeah, it's a first for me. And I saw a lot of other pieces, including some like salt glaze, glaze blue lettered stoneware. So I'm hoping there will be some whole stuff like that there, but it's all late throws. It's the oldest bottle they found in there were like 19, late 1910s probably. And there was very few of those. So salt glaze, it was a late throw. So the thing is with late throws is usually it'll be thrown out because there was something wrong with them. Like this one has bad cracks in it which were probably there when it was thrown out. It's probably why it was thrown out. So I'm hoping I'll find a cracked up stoneware because as long as it's whole, I can, or, or preferably even better, just chip. But I have hopes for this. I also found uh, remains of a uh, clay master ink, that one's, which was probably English, but still really would have been in good find. So yeah, and also I found some other crock pieces. So I have hopes. But that's a great find either way. Yeah, nice. Okay, let's continue. Here's, unfortunately, when I found it, I thought it was a commemorative spoon. It's still a really good find, but not as good as I thought. So it's not a commemorative spoon. Which it looks like when you look at it like this. But it is a really fancy spoon. You can, I'm not sure if you can see it as like a hummingbird there with flowers. Try to get that to focus. Yeah, so it's a beautiful silver plated spoon. You know, it's not as good as I was hoping for. Because if it was commemorative, that would be much cooler and historically significant. It says... Evo Hoins or Moins. I'll have to research it. Booth and Hayden. A1. And Hayden's A1. Oh well, that's still a beautiful spoon though, of course. Yeah. Still a nice find. I'm still probably gonna keep it. It's just not as good as I initially thought when I found it. And here are these two, which are a set. This one would be like a mini sugar bowl and a creamer. Here, I'll show this one more closely. They both say made in Japan. On the bottom, this is pre-World War II though, for sure. But they both had the same kind of flower, but the, on the other one, it's pretty much all faded away. And here it still has it a bit. So I'll show this one. See that, it's nice. Yeah. Then this Clicko Club. Yep. It's nice, common, but it's a nice color, as you can see. So I'm probably gonna keep it. Normally I wouldn't, I would sell a Clicko Club. It's so common, but it's not that common. It's not common common, but it's common to the point where, never mind. But I'll probably keep it. It's in, it's in pretty much mint condition other than some state, some dirt. And it's a nice color. I regret not keeping, once I found a green one, I regret not keeping them. That one's actually not common. But too late, I already sold it. Then there's this nice Absorbing Junior. Unfortunately, I couldn't get much of the dirt out because you can see it has a very narrow top, so I couldn't fit a brush in there. Still a nice find though. Let's see what it says on the base. It says W. F. Young, Springfield, Mass. And that's an Owens, Illinois mark, so it's a bit newer, but still not new, new. Oh yeah, here's what's probably the highest value find, even though I don't know that for a fact. I think I'm pretty sure of it though. It's a, look at this, and it's ground glass. It's the globe for a New York Central Railroad lantern. Look at that. 
beautiful. The only one that you find online were made by Diet, the company, but this one doesn't have that mark. Look at that, that's beautiful. No damage on it whatsoever. Is that damage? No, that's a bubble. Never mind. Look at that. Beautiful. Whoa. And the ground glass on the top and bottom. Nice. Beautiful. So happy about that. That's right. I'm keeping it in this box. And it's so important to me not to damage it. I am so nervous about it. This is such a good find. That's a beautiful find, though. Then this Borden's bottle that's probably 20s, but what's weird about it is what's on the base. Look, inside the B, it says 16 out of 17. Let me know if you want to, and it has an E. E is probably the glass company or something, I don't know, but 16 out of 17, what does that even mean? Huh? I really have no idea, that's why I'm asking. What does that even mean? Oh, maybe it's a mold number. Yeah, that makes sense. But why 17? I feel like that's a kind of unusual number for a mold. It normally would be like a dozen or something. But maybe it's a mold number. That's what I'd guess. Then there's this really nice local bottle, just a mere dairy. It's a first, I have one of this design, but only in the quart size. Let me go over to it so you can see it. Right here, it's slightly different. It's more of a block of letter than, yeah. See there, that's a local bottle I live in Croton. Yeah, that's a nice find. It's probably, if I'm reading Dagger correctly, it's 1930, but I could be wrong. Okay, then I got two Jeanette Mason jar lids. I found what a Jeanette Mason last video in the same dump. So let me see, go over to it so you can see it. You can see what it would have looked like. There we go. That one also has lid. And then... There's this teacup. Unfortunately, I cannot find a brand name on it, but it's in good shape. Other than it has a small crack in the handle. A hairline crack. Yep. Uh, two more items. And then we're done. First is this really cool one. Haze 5 Fruit. Not sure what it been, but I'm guessing like a fruit juice or something. A smoothie kind of thing. Portland, Maine. That's nice. Probably 20s. Then, last find. There's this. It looks kind of like an older milk. It's E.F. Clement. Rochester, New York. Fortunately, it did develop a very minor crack. You can see right there. And one other one over here. But other than that, it's good. So, it's still a great find. Yeah. And uh, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.